Hello and welcome to Differential Discussions. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dave. And we're back with another Synovial Fluid. Of course. Mm -hmm. You can never get away from Synovial Fluids. No. Especially on the shift I worked. Yeah. <laughs> so we're on uh, low power. Yeah. And uh, I can see lots of nucleated cells. And I can see quite a bit of red cells too. Yeah. Yeah. So... That's not typically super significant in a synovial, but oh, <laughs> holy cow! I wonder if that's a clot. Like if there was a clot starting in there. Mm. So, um, generally speaking, especially when it comes to peripheral blood smears, I don't like you to like cherry pick areas, but you should be somewhat careful when you're doing body fluids. So these big, 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 big blobs of white cells will will sort of ignore. Um, yes. And this is probably just a giant fibrin strand or. Yep. yep. Yeah. Just a piece of junk, right? Like, uh, you know, um, piece of lint from clothing or something like that I can get in there. So I don't see any areas that are like super exciting that I want to jump to. Like yep. I don't see any ugly big cells, which I mean, it's a synovial, so. And it looks fairly homogenous too, right? Like we're, it's, we can't really pick a bad area. It looks like. Um, as long as I don't pick one of those giants. <laughs> yeah. <of> <laughs> I don't want that. Beautiful. So just as I expected. Um, so this is where I like to say we lean on the neutrophil button, right? And we just kind of, we get a lot of neutrophils. Well, we're still on 40, so I'll, I'll drop down a little bit more, but like, just so people can see, like, this is a, this isn't even as thick as some of them, but this is like a giant clump of the cells and yep. it's really hard to actually see individual cells. So it's not like we're going to be able to see features and be able to call them. And that's why we don't count the giant clumps right. like this. Right. Yeah, we, we, the 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 ability to differentiate one cell from the other is just not going to be there. So uh, avoid those areas. We'll go back um, to like this area. And then now, when I'm thinking to myself, is like, what would cause a ton of neutrophils to infiltrate the joint space? So, <clears throat> so a couple of things come to mind with synovials is infection. So we might look for bacteria or yeast, and uh, the other qualitative findings would be perhaps crystals or something to that effect. Um, so we'll be, and there they are. They are. <laughs> Let me play with the fine tune because that's where you can really see. One hundred percent. We'll wait a second. I will point them out, but I just want to see if anybody else notices them as they're looking. Yes. Yeah. Because this is a this is somewhat of a skill to to develop here. Um. All right. Oh, there's a bunch of them. All right, so I'll start pointing them. There's one here. And yep. actually, let me get the little annotation guy so I can actually draw. Yep. So there's one here. Yep. There's one here. And there's another one over here. I just want to, I need to see it again. There we go, right there. And I think yep. there's one here. Perhaps. Let's see. Am I missing any others? Might be a All little right. bit so here. For for our viewers, right? Like now look at those markings. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. And then now Melissa. Let me clear them. Yep. And if we play with that fine tune, you'll see them kind of refract in and out of focus yeah, a little bit. This one's really good. Mm-hmm. So whenever there is a negative space, it could be between cells internally is kind of like the gold standard when the crystal is inside of a white cell, it's it's pretty definitive. Yeah. Um, but you have this negative space that has refractility to it. It is 100% uh, a crystal. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so th this one's really nice. That one's not bad. There is a little one right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's see too. 
And so there are other methods for uh, testing and looking for crystals and identifying and assessing them. We're not going to cover that here, but it's still prudent to say the qualitatively that they're present, um, that assist the clinician a lot. So, and then think about with this person, right? So what the clinician is going to get pretty much right away from the laboratory is the cell count. Mm -hmm. And that cell count is usually a marker for inflammatory conditions, right? So if the white count's really, really high and they're suspicious of a bacterial infection, this person might go to surgery right away because they wanted to bride that wound uh, and get all the, um, the bad stuff out. If they know that there are crystals present and that's the causative uh, pathophysiology, um, they might not be as invasive. Um, so that kind of information can be important. Yeah, it's a different, completely different treatment. Yep. <clears throat> and the other thing that's uh, important to note is we don't really see gout crystals on yeah. smears. We will see pseudo gout. We don't really yeah. see the gout. And it's just because we don't see gout when you have your specimens in EDTA, which typically we put our synovials in EDTA. So we won't see gout on the peripheral blood smear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I remember correctly, the procedure says it like dissolves it, I think. Yeah. Okay. So we, we won't see the gout, but we'll see the pseudo gout. So that's what these are pseudo gout and pseudo gout is nice rectangular. Usually <laughs> the long ones are nice and easy for us to pick out like these guys, but this one still is teeny rectangular and refractile like our typical pseudo gouts. Yeah. The, the shape can be um, uh, really useful. Uh, usually we use polarizing uh, light microscopy to to make the determination. So the polarizing characteristics of pseudo gout are opposite that of gout, helping uh, to distinguish the two. I've been surprised sometimes, right? Like sometimes where you think it might be uh, a gout or it might be a pseudo gout and it turns out to be the other by polarizing light. But pretty much if you get those rhomboid squared off crystals, it's, it's pseudo gout. Yeah. And also, if you see it on the body fluid smear, it's pseudo gout. Then that's pretty, yes, yeah, true. Mm -hmm. So really cool. And then differential wise, uh, I lots of neutrophils in this field. Um, some smudgy fellas too. So yeah. I'm gonna grab my annotation tool. So like cells like uh, like this, um, you know, it's just kind of like a dead splotch. We can kind of skip those. Um, and then it looks like we'll probably have the occasional mono slash macrophage, depending on what your institution uses for calling guidelines. Um, and you may see those crystals in, in the in the mono max as well, right? Like uh, so. Big acidic cells. Yep, absolutely. Heck, I think I've seen crystals in lymphocytes too, very rarely. <laughs> So we, we verified the presence of crystals that does not necessarily exclude infection either, right? So we still be somewhat vigilant in looking for bacteria and yeast and things like that. And then this one, I just stopped here. Let me go a little bit. This one. It's just to showcase our three mono cells. Here. Yep. 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 100%. We could see that beautiful. Uh, light blue cytoplasm. The coloration on this slide is perfect. Yeah. And uh, red cells and uh, joint fluid is is typically um, I, at our place of uh, business. Uh, we didn't enumerate them at all. Um, yeah. Somewhat inconsequential. Yeah. We see some pycnotic cells. Yes, that's why I stopped here. Yep. So we can see these are pycnotic. Pycnotic just means that they're dying, right? They're going through their process of condensing their nucleus to break down and be removed. Yep. Very common for neutrophils and body fluids. Oh, yeah. Um, they don't have to sit in a body fluid for very long before they... <sighs> <laughs> Yeah. I was coming to this cell. Mm. So I was trying to see if it was a basophil or if it's just a cell that was smudging. Yeah, my guess is smudging. But it, but the those do kind of look like baso granules, but I don't know. I personally would uh 
defer. I probably wouldn't. I'm wondering yeah. because I've been seeing like this cell here, but this one looks really smudgy. But this one looks almost yeah like a cell, but with basal granules. Yeah, I buy that. I really do. Not that one. This one was smudgy, but this mm -hmm. one. But it looked basal e, but smudged. This yeah. One more basal e. I buy and that. So I guess let me tell people why I think it's basal e because of the mostly because of the granules. Yeah. It's because you have those large purple granules that are not equal shape, equal size. And, you know, some of our listeners may say, well, there's no granules on top of the nucleus. But think about mm -hmm. making a cytospin. You're smoshing a cell against the side. So it's not surprising that you wouldn't get a, a perfect cell when you're smoshing mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And, and even still... Uh... Granules on top of the nucleus is somewhat of a random event. I mean, yeah. if uh, if there's not a lot of granules to begin with, even in a peripheral blood smear, it's not necessary necessary to call. Yeah, I, I think I'm tending to agree with you because um, just because of the size of those uh, those granules, mm -hmm. we probably find if we had a counter, it's probably still be one two percent. You know, oh, gosh, but, yeah. we just happen to find it. Them. We just yeah. happen to, you know, happen <laughs> to come across it. So we have a lymphocyte kind of living over here. Yeah. Ooh, this is a nice one. Ooh, looks like a pile of them. <laughs> it's like one good one and I don't know. Uh... Yeah. More crystals. Yeah, that's a, that one's like a in your face kind of crystal. I used to like to if if I was on the polarizing scope, you could throw the filter on yes. and uh see the pretty colors. I don't have a polarizer, guys, sorry. <laughs> so I just want to stop here and say this Ooh. is not nucleated red. But you said uh not. This is not. Yeah. Very good. And so what what speaks to you? Because um, I think a lot of people would look at this, right? And think NRBC. And it's not a crazy thing for a student or or even a tech at a glance, right? But what, what speaks to you that makes it not? So the cytoplasm has granules in it. And if you look at the neutrophil next to it, this looks more like this than it does this. Agreed. Yep. 100%. That and also this clumping pattern in the nucleus is not an NRBC clumping pattern. It's definitely a neutrophilic clumping pattern, but it's when the neutrophils are starting to go through apoptosis, when they're starting to get pycnotic, when they're starting to break down their DNA, but that's the, the typical look to the DNA. Yeah. Yeah, the, the cytoplasm is the big key there, 100%. Yep. If you're really on the fence and it's somewhat important, you can also cheat a little bit. If there was a CBC that was done recently, NRBC should be present in the uh, um, the CBC and correlate somewhat to the body fluid. But That's true. I wouldn't expect to see NRBC, so we're going to skip those clumps that were... Yeah. <laughs> Let's count them. Yeah. We'll be here all day on this one. All um, day. Oh, we'll stop. Here. Like... Not going into the clump, mm -hmm. but yep. at the edge here, I just wanted to point out this other mono. Yep. Nice vacuolization, good color on the cytoplasm. Um, and then, you know, the other thing, too, I think maybe is worth addressing at the moment is um, you're going to run into cells that might be a little bit smushed and like mm -hmm. uh, difficult to call. Um, a lot of people agonize over what to call cells uh don't bother i mean <laughs> so if we think about what's significant vast majority of the cells are neutrophils yeah. we found crystals that explain this uh infiltration of white cells into the joint space uh don't kill yourself on if that's a lymph or a, or a mono or i mean 
And it's typically not a, a malignant cell because we don't typically see malignancies in synovial. So, yeah, I've looked at a lot of joint fluid. I've I have never seen a malignancy in joints. Um, not to say that it's not possible, but it's just um, not the common thing that you look for in a joint fluid. Right. Right. So another mono there in the center. Yeah, beautiful mono in the center. Yep. And then I was trying to see if there's any crystals. I was wondering if these are crystals, but they're not really refracting. They could be. And those are the ones that can kind of give you heartburn. You don't yeah. know whether to call them or not. Uh, lucky for us, we've had huge signals yeah. elsewhere. There um, isn't but I kind of feel like you're right. I I think there's some tiny pseudo gouts in that cell. There is a nice pseudo gout. And here we go. In one of these cells over here. All right. Now I just got to find it on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be disorienting, huh? A little bit. Melissa's an expert driver. No. Where did you go? Oh. Is that a lobe? It's refracting a little bit better on the scope than it is on here. But there's a little pseudo gout right here. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing a whole lot else here other than the pseudo gouts and all of these neutrophils and the pycnotic cells. Yeah, I tend to I tend to agree. And those occasional basal looking fellows too. There's another giant clumps world like that. Ooh. I just think that's pretty, the uh the dead cell there. Okay. How cool is that? Very cool. Yeah, that's just the, the nucleus all <laughs> broken yep. down. Very pretty. Playing with the fine tune. I don't really see any crystals we've already seen them so we know they're there though and then there's a nice mono in here let's look at one more let's try one more field see if we see anything else okay Let's we'll end with that giant crystal. Yeah, the big, big fella. Yeah. <laughs> cool. This is an interesting slide. Yeah. So we got to see pseudo gout crystals with lots of neutrophils. And again, so, just to kind of for completeness, we don't evaluate red cell morph at all. Some institutions mm -hmm. will know that there's red cells present, but some institutions won't say anything at all about the reds. Yeah. I, I, for some body fluids, red cells are very important, and we'll get to those at some point. I very uh, synovial fluids. There's so many traumatic taps that happen with synovial fluids, so that would be a situation where you're introducing blood uh, that wasn't in the joint space, um, just because the fluids are, are difficult to collect. But uh, but yeah, relatively insignificant. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's everything for this video. So thanks for watching. Thank you for your time.